Does he need to be so unhinged? For the president to say that he is being treated worse than the Salem witch trials uh, is unhinged. This is an unhinged rant from the president of the United States. For the past three or four years, members of the U.S. commentariat have said that President Trump has acted, quote unquote, unhinged. I kind of wish that the commentary had reserved that term for Monday night's coronavirus press conference. I have a couple of interesting, we have a few uh, clips that we're just going to put up. We could turn the lights a little bit lower. I think you'll find them interesting. And then we'll answer some questions. I'll ask you some questions because you're so guilty, but forget it. Uh, but most importantly, we're going to get back onto the reason we're here, which is the success we're having, okay? Uh, please, you could put it on. Thank you. People should be more concerned right now with the flu in this country. A lot of people are concerned about the coronavirus because they're hearing a lot of news about it right now. Trump was basically rerunning Hannity footage. Part of that in there was originally broadcast on Sean Hannity's March 26th show. The media mob, they shouldn't sh throw stones from their ivory glass towers. Take a look. People should be more concerned right now with the flu in this country. A lot of people are concerned about the coronavirus because they're hearing a lot of news about it right now. So what you have here is Trump, perhaps the most loyal consumer of Sean Hannity, repackaging and rebroadcasting Fox News to his viewers with his seal of approval. Now, President Trump is not a terribly complicated person to figure out. We can usually tell what has him rattled by looking at his Twitter feed or listening to him at a press briefing. Over the weekend, the New York Times published a huge investigation of the various ways in which Trump failed to respond forcefully and early to the coronavirus crisis. So the story in the New York Times was a total fake. It's a fake newspaper and they write fake stories. And someday, hopefully in five years when I'm not here, those papers are all going out of business because nobody's going to want to read them. There is a meta aspect to this that is just, I mean, it's pathetic, but it's also a little bit ironic and a little bit humorous. As there were more cases, and it was clear that it was spreading out of China, where it originated, the president took this move that he was widely criticized for by Democrats and even some Republicans at the time, which was he halted a number of flights from China into the U.S. In that video, President Trump used audio of Maggie Haberman, the famous New York Times reporter, talking about the travel restrictions that President Trump had opposed on, imposed on China, saying basically that those travel restrictions against China were effective. He was accused of xenophobia. He was accused of making a racist move. At the end of the day, it was probably effective. Now, note the irony and the contradiction here. President Trump is hammering the New York Times for being a fake paper. In that very same briefing, he's quoting Haberman approvingly, talking about how the travel restrictions on China were effective. This is what I call the conservative New York Times conundrum. No one ever seems to mind that at one moment you're quoting the New York Times favorably, and the next moment you're calling it an organ of the Democratic Party. Well, first of all, I want to uh, thank uh, the, the, the president, the vice president, for doing a really good job of communicating with all the governors. So we could give you hundreds of clips like that. From he was asked, you know, who did this? I've never yeah. seen a video like that played in, in this room. Uh, it looks a, a bit like a campaign ad. Who, who produced that video for you? Uh, that was done by a group in the office, and it was done just by, we just put some clips together. I could give you, uh, I'll bet you I have over 100 more clips, even better than them. They were just pieced together over the last two hours. That was just, oh, we have far better than that. That's nothing compared to some of them. This was produced here in the White House. Yeah, by, this uh, was done by uh, Dan and a group of people, and they just put it together in a period of probably less than two hours. Why do you feel need to do that? Because uh, we're getting fake news, and I like to have it corrected. If you find the right clip, you can make an argument for just about anything in this country. And that's what Trump did in this particular moment. He also bragged that he could find 100 more examples. Well, you know what? I'm sure he probably could. But that doesn't mean anything. Now, this very example, this very episode, is why cable news networks, except for Fox, have started to be a little more discriminating with respect to carrying these things live. 
This video is very, very much like a campaign ad, just a poorly produced one.